Hello everybody, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we are going to do a tour of our brand new Forest River No Boundaries 19.6. Forest River No Boundaries 19.6 comes in at 24 feet 4 inches long. So it's a nice, decent length trailer, still staying under that 25 foot mark. It weighs only around 4,300 pounds, tongue weight under 500 pounds, so it's perfect if you're going to tow it with a Silverado 1500, F 150, a Sierra. If you have the tow package, plenty of flavor. It does come with the Composite Asdale siding. They do have solar prep on these, but this one has the solar package. So it already has a 100 watt solar panel, a 1000 watt inverter, but we'll get more to that on the inside. So that backcountry package includes a nice little griddle stove that hooks on right here and a prep station. Uh, we currently have those under there. You haven't taken them out since it's such a new rig. But down here, you do have your propane hookup. So it's a nice exterior propane hookup for that backcountry setup. Uh, buyers beware. We've had, uh, we're part of some of the Facebook groups. If you're gonna use that backcountry setup, the griddle and whatnot, make sure you fasten that on properly because it would really suck to be cooking some bacon and eggs and have them fall down on the ground or even on your feet and burn yourself. So just a heads up. So here, as I said, we have every package decked out. We have the power tongue jack. We have one propane tank here and one AGM battery. Um, we didn't go with adding a second AGM because we're actually gonna swap these out to two lithium, maybe even more in the uh, under body storage, the uh, pass through storage. We're probably gonna add a nice lithium setup and maybe even increase the inverter size. Coming to the driver's side, you have your pass-through storage goes through to the other side obviously you have your city water connection and your fresh water connection fresh water connection is great you're gonna boondock go off the grid hit some public land you can fill that and uh, not have to worry about any hookups and whatnot you do have four stabilizers around the whole rig they're not power stabilizers they're manual but you just get a drill and you're good to go on that Coming here to the back of the rig, right past the slide out, you have your uh, sewer outlet connections. So your black, your gray, you have black tank flush, cable satellite hookup, and of course your 30 amp hookup. Pretty standard. And then we do, of course, because we have the upgrade packages, have the six lug rims and then the off grid wheels. We've heard mixed reviews about the wheels. Eventually we'll probably upgrade them, but right now we're sticking with them. Coming around to the back, you have a full-size spare tire. You do have a nice bumper that you can fit in uh, your sewage hoses and whatnot. You have this galvanized steel plating. It's pretty decent, prevent rock chips and whatnot. Ladder to go to the roof. The roof, I believe, can hold 500 pounds of weight. And up on that roof, you actually have uh, kayak racks, which are pretty awesome for the outdoor adventurer that wants to get off off the grid and go hit the river and whatnot um, and then of course just your furnace uh, exhaust and your standard things like that we do have a backup camera this did not come standard with it it came standard with the Furion backup camera camera hookup but we are gonna have another video about that camera the install how easy it was, how much money you can save compared to the Furion system. All right, now going into the rig, into the 19.6, you have these fold down heavy duty steps. Uh, we really like them. It can get a little messy if you were out in the mud, whatnot, you have to fold those in. So you might want to think about using the spray port and cleaning those off, um, but they're pretty handy. They're, they're pretty good. So let's go into the rig. So right when you come in, you'll notice first that we have a nice screen door. So if you don't want to have this closed all the way, you can have just this one and you can get that nice fresh air coming in your unit. Right over here, we have some nice key holders. We have a bottle opener 
And then up above that, you'll see we have different buttons to extend the awning in and out, the slide, and then we have a few lights for the awning, the outside, which they call the porch light, and this turns on and off all of your interior lights if you would like them all on. So to the left, when you come right into the camper, you'll see we have a nice mirror, but then you open it up, and on both sides, you'll see you have a huge amount of pantry space. This, you can hang jackets, sweatshirts, whatever you need to. Um, and also, this is included with the camper. They have a little safe that they put in there as well. So you have a key for that. So if there's anything important you need to store in there, you can know it's locked and safe. Right down below this storage, you'll see you have the furnace here, and that is 20,000 BTU. So we're here in the bathroom in the 19.6. Uh, here on this wall right here, you have everything from your solar controller, solar charge controller, your heated holding tanks, fresh gray black, and this right here is your water heater, and then your water pump, and then this right here is also water heater, but this is for running water heater off propane. This is for electric. Right here you can check the status of all your tanks. As you can see, this is brand new, so fresh two-thirds, black, empty, gray, two-thirds, because they ran some water through the system and tested it out. So now I'm sitting on the toilet. This is a plastic toilet, not a porcelain toilet. They do that to keep weight down. I'm six foot, 260 to 270 pounds, depending on the week. Um, it's pretty comfortable. It's actually a good amount of space. Uh, leg room, shoulder room, everything. So it's pretty good. So coming over to the sink area, we've got a really nice size medicine cabinet. So you do have a nice mirror in the front, which everybody knows is important. But inside, it's actually got two big shelves, so you can fit a lot of stuff in there. And right beneath it, there's also a little small open area as well, so you can put some things that you just want really easy access to. We've got a nice little sink, decent size. You can definitely wash your hands, brush your teeth, do what you need to do. And beneath there, another huge space, so you can definitely fit some towels in there, whatever you need. And right beneath that, you will see there are two outlets so you can plug in whatever you may need to do in the bathroom. So right here's your corner shower. It's got a little kind of rubber locker that goes around the doors. This right here has the shower miser, which is really awesome. It's basically a water unit that helps you conserve water. So this being designed as mostly an off-the-grid boondocking rig, it uh, helps you just have water longer, not waste it, go through it as quick so you can stay out there in the woods a little bit longer. So now I'm in the shower. Like I said, I'm 260, 270 pounds. I'm six foot tall and there is plenty of headroom because of this little uh, sunlight lifted area. It gives you about another three, four inches, say probably four inches. So it's pretty comfortable. Um, shoulder width, it's decent in here. We're coming from a class B van. So this right here is huge for me, <laughs> but uh, I think for any person that's even coming from another RV, from another uh, travel trailer, that this will be perfectly nice. All right, so now we're in the kitchen. As you can see right here, we have a suburban two burner propane stove. This is a manual light. Right beneath that, we have a nice area for spices or whatever you need to put in there. And right below, you have a convection microwave. So this is both your oven and your microwave as well. And up here, this is where you have your nice big storage area. Pretty big and pretty deep as well. So you could fit even pots and pans in there if you needed to, too. So over on this side of the counter, you have a nice deep sink. It does have a nice cover over on top of it, so if you need a little more space. 
coming down right here, you have a couple more areas for your cabinets. So you have a nice big area in here. And over on this side, these ones actually pull out. So this is something you would use for your utensils or whatever else you may need in the kitchen. You have two 110 outlets right here to plug your coffee maker in, whatever you need. And the last thing down here on the bottom, it's called the road vac. So you can actually turn this button on sweep all of your dust and dirt from the floor right into the bottom right here. That's not something we were looking for, but it's pretty cool, I must say. All right, continuing in the kitchen area, we have your thermostat right here on the wall, kind of in a weird spot next to the fridge, but it runs your AC and heat. We'll get to the AC after, but it is actually a 13.5 K BTU standard in these rigs, in the Nobos, but this one actually has the 15K BTU IPO uh, upgrade because we have the Adventurer, Explorer, and Backcountry package. And because of those packages in our solar, we have a Norkel 12 volt freezer fridge. They are separate compartments, very large, especially for us. And then also continuing the electronics, we have the uh, TV over here, which is a Connex 12 volt TV. Uh, and that is part of the reason we didn't go for a second AGM battery and we're just gonna do the lithium battery upgrade because being 100% honest, straightforward, everybody we've talked to, uh, everything we've read online, these Norcold fridges will not last through the night if you have lights on and whatnot and you're boondocking. You need a second battery, at least with the AGM side, but you really should think about upgrading to two lithiums to really maintain your 12 volt systems when it comes to the fridge, the TV, LED lights and whatnot. So right over here, we have an actual breakfast bar. So this is something that isn't common in travel trailers that are under 25 feet. So this is primarily one of the reasons why we ended up choosing this trailer specifically because we don't need an actual dining area when we can just sit here. There's two of us and that's all we need to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. All right, so over here, this is our living room area. We have a jackknife sofa. So this does pull out and this can definitely comfortably sleep one adult. You could have two, but if they're big people, they probably won't fit as well as say two kids would fit on it. Right above there, we have even more storage. Pretty decent, goes pretty far back. You can fit a lot of stuff in here. Definitely for us, considering we're coming from a class B van. Now we're over here in the bedroom slash second lounge area. So the Nobo 19.6 has a Murphy bed. We actually really liked just the layout in general, but the Murphy bed is kind of a cool uh, thing to have uh, because if you have people over and you're enjoying a dinner or whatnot, you have this table that moves around. You can put it outside if you need another little prep area or you want to sit there and eat outside. But you can move it around here inside and then you have this secondary seating area as I said that this one right here decently comfortable the uh, one Brittany just showed you not as comfortable we will say that for sure but you have two side stands and then uh, 110 outlets USB outlets and then over here on the other side same thing 110 USB but then you also have a switch for lights and then you have your inverter on off switch for when you are on battery power. So you can click that on, 1000 watt inverter. You can run uh, things like the 110 outlets to charge cameras, phones, laptops, things like that. Um, can't run the AC, just a heads up. Uh, 
you know, so if you wanted to do that, you'd have to upgrade better lithium battery system than just your standard AGM. Uh, you'd want a lot, four to six at least, and you would need a better inverter, preferably like a 3200 watt inverter, uh, if you're going to try to run the AC. So if you're looking to do that type of thing in here, just know you will have to do some mods and some upgrades. All right, now we're going to show you the Murphy bed down in actual bed mode. So in this area, you do have storage underneath the uh, second lounge area. It's a pretty decent amount of storage. You do have storage on this side of the uh, lounge, you know, love seat area slash Murphy bed. That side does not have storage down below, but you do have full storage up above uh, that do have rods in them so you can hang things on both sides and they go really deep which is actually crazy like you can't even really reach all the way down there it's that deep uh, only thing just a heads up if you, you go look at these is these do stop at these uh, banister window coverings for your blinds um, so we've seen some people do some modifications to that something we might do in the future but I'm going to show you real quick how to put this Murphy bed down so you have, like I said, your secondary love seat lounge area. That props down. So if it was just, you know, maybe you and a friend and you didn't want to put the bed fully down, one could crash here, one could crash there. But take the extra step to put the bed down. It's probably a lot more comfortable. So you have this right here, spring-loaded little lever lock. And this bounces right back in. Just pull that out. Drops the platform down. And as you can see, we still have the plastic on here. That's how new this is. And you drop the mattress down. There are uh, two pillows you can see probably tucked away. Those are actually the little shelf storage areas and you have a bottom and an upper shelf. So that's really handy. And this bed is a actual residential queen bed. So you could go to the store, buy a queen mattress and put it in here and it would work. And you can probably see, here's the slide out. You can have the bed down and bring the slide in. So if you didn't ever want to put this up and then make that secondary lounge area, you could put a really comfortable queen mattress on here, whatever you wanted. Uh, we haven't slept on this yet. It's a little firm. It's not bad. A lot more comfortable than our Winnebago Travados mattress, that's for sure. Um, but we will probably upgrade this or at least put a nice, you know, probably four inch, uh, maybe memory foam gel cooling cover or pad on it. Um, or we might just upgrade and get a different mattress because we definitely want a comfortable bed. That was a priority uh, when we searched for our next rig. Um, which, by the way, everybody that's been following our channel, we're going to talk more in another video, but we still have our Travado and we're not getting rid of that. So when I say getting our new rig, this is a second rig. Thank you for watching our tour video. Please like our video, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We are going to be going on an adventure to the northeast this fall and into the winter, so you'll want to stay tuned for that. And if you guys have any more questions about the Forest River No Boundaries 19.6, feel free to put them down in the comments. I am going to add in the description a bunch of details. And probably, as you've seen through the video, there was some overlays of information. I'm going to try to include as much as I can to, to help everybody out that might be interested in more of a off-grid, more hitting public land, not being hooked up at a campground travel trailer. Uh, this is just like every other travel trailer, perfect for being hooked up. But this does have many other things, like the upgraded uh, suspension, the torsion suspension, the solar, whether it's solar prepped or already solar packaged on board, the off-grid tires, etc. So if you have any questions about any of that, like I said, drop it in the comments. I'll include as much as I can, but once again, thanks for watching.